What's up guys? Welcome to another Rise of Kingdoms videos. But today I will share with you guys some tips on how to fight effectively on the open field. Um, there are three things you can do to help improve your open field fighting abilities. Uh, one, constantly checking on how many enemies attacking you. Watch for that cross saw icon at the bottom right corner. When you see that cross saw icon, it means you are being targeted. However, it doesn't tell you how many enemy marsh are attacking you. You need to click on it to see the list of enemy. So when you click on that cross saw icon, you will see a list of enemy. Zero, zero second means that the enemy is currently attacking you. Uh, anything more than zero, zero second, it means that the enemy is marching toward you. So you got to plan out accordingly. Um, you need to constantly checking on it, the list of enemy to make sure that you're not clicking on more than you can handle. For example, uh, a march like Witcher Sun Tzu can take on four or five marches from the enemies. So if I see like three marches attacking me, so, so like, it's okay, like you can stay. But if I see seven or eight marches attacking uh, Richard and Sanzu, then I will need to pull Richard and Sanzu back because I don't want to take on that many marches. Or if you use uh, Chan and Chow Chow, uh, you don't want to take more than like one marches. Uh, so if you if you use Chan and Chow Chow and you, and you click on the cross saw icon, and you see a list of enemies that you 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 see that like more than one march is attacking you. You should definitely pull back a little bit because when you pull back your march, the enemy will most likely try to target something else. So once you lose those those target uh those enemies, you can just return back and fighting again. So just don't stay at don't stay still at one spot and getting targeted and getting attacked by many many marches. So very very important. Uh, so like you need to keep an eye on that list of enemy so you can move your march accordingly. If there are a lot of marches attacking you, you might you want to pull back. Um, if you get swarmed by a lot of marches, it doesn't matter. If you have two of the best commanders, you will be welcome with this. You will be welcome with this. A fate changer. It doesn't matter what kind of commander you have. If you get swarmed by like seven or eight marches, you will get an instant fate changer. And uh, if you get swarmed like two or three times, your hospital will be completely filled and you're not going to be able to fight anymore unless you got to use uh, speed up to heal. So. It's very, very important for you to constantly checking on that list of enemy if you want to fight effectively. I know your enemy. Very, very important. Uh, two, never ever let your troop die. Don't even let your troop go below 50%, especially if you're a low power player. I I know sometimes it's uh, unavoidable to have uh, your marches kill, but uh, you should never intentionally let your march fight until it die. Uh, you gain a lot more severe wounded troops when you use a march that below fifty percent HP. Uh, so that is um, a big no. So do not fight until your march die here. Uh, do not until your march die. Big no, big no. You want to refresh your march? You want to refresh your march as soon as it go to 50% uh, or below 50%. So right here, you can see that um, I am returning my marches here so that I can uh, bring out a full march again and I don't get a lot of severe wounded from from, from fighting with a full marches compared when I fighting using a march that's below 50%. Um, it's all about sustainability. You want to be able to fight longer, 
you want to be able to uh, get less severe wounded instead of just keep fighting until it dies and then you gonna end up with double or triple the amount of severe wounded you you would get. So another another good uh, thing you you must do is refreshing your march at when it goes to below fifty percent. Three, the most important of all, position your troops based on your power and commander defense ability. Know your commanders, know their skill range. Uh, for this, we will go over some of the scenario and I will explain more in more details. So let's go over our first scenario here. Uh, so scenario number one, So we are in this mass PVP right here. And let's say if you you use like a John the Bark. So right here you have a John the Bark. The circle, the blue circle is how big how big is um John the Bark uh buff. So if you play someone like a march like Yondervark, you uh you probably into a support supporting role. Uh, you definitely don't want to position yourself somewhere here, where you like in the middle, easy to be target. Uh, Yondervark, the buff range is pretty huge. So, for example, if if I play Yondervark, I would put her somewhere here, and hitting this red march it right here. And I can still able to provide, I can still able to provide the buff for my alliance. And without putting myself in danger of like being targeted by multiple marches, because I am a supporting role, I don't want to be targeted by multiple marches, right? So, so that if I play um, Jonavark, let's see if if I play a, a different commander. For example, if I play, um, if I play, uh, if I play someone like Witcher, a tanky march. If I play someone like Witcher, like a tanky march. Um, so the blue, the blue uh, triangle again is the range of his debuff. So you want to know what his range of debuff is like. So for example. For someone like Witcher, I would like to be a little bit tanky. Uh, I want to play my tank role. So I want to position him somewhere, maybe somewhere around here, where I can tank and I can debuff many, many marches from the enemy. Uh, because I can allow myself to be swum by three or four marches. So I would put, I would position myself somewhere around here and just uh, tanking as many marches as I can. Why my why my uh, other alliance member doing the damage on the side? Um, let's see if we have another commander we can use. So again, now we have a um, YSG. So if I use something like YSG, uh, hit circle. His circle area is the range for his AOE skill, right? Um, and if I bring uh, if I bring some something like YFG, it means I am going into more like AOE damages, uh, a DPS a DPS role. But I don't want to I don't want to position myself here, where I get target easily. Like I could position myself here still, and I can still do a lot of AOE damages to all the market nearby. I don't have to risk to position myself here in the middle of the, the big uh, mass of enemy here. But here is a very, very dangerous position here because if I get very close here, like I can, I have, I have very, like, I can hit more target with my AOE skill, but I am putting myself into a very, very dangerous situation where I will be targeted. And my role is not for tanking. My role is for doing DPS. So I can either put myself somewhere here, 
and I can still do a lot of AoE damage to all the march in front of me. Or I can put myself somewhere here where I get great support from my alliance member and I can still provide, I can still do a lot of AoE damages because the, the range from my AoE is pretty huge. But like I don't need to go right into the middle here to be able to deal a lot of AoE damages. But anywhere around here, as long as my range reach the target, like I can do a lot of AoE damages. Here or here would be a perfect position for something like YSG. You stay safe and you can deal a lot more damage. Uh, let's see what other commander we can uh, use. Um, So let's say you have a, someone like Sanzu. If you have someone like Sanzu here, uh, his range is a little bit um, his range is a little bit smaller. Uh, it's not as big as YSG, so you might have to come a little bit more closer to the enemy. So I would definitely position him somewhere around here, uh, a little bit behind one of the tank so that he can do all the AoE damage to all the enemy in that fan shape area right there. Uh, I would put him there, somewhere around there, or uh, maybe a little bit somewhere around here, where I get the support from my alliance member, as well as I be able to do a lot of AoE damages. Um, I don't want to put him here, like there's only one single target here, but I want to utilize his AoE skill, right? So if I want to attack, if I want to fight somewhere around here, I would put him somewhere around here because there are like two, three marches here from enemy. So I can catch my AOE skill as well on them. Uh, definitely not want to put myself somewhere here. Like this is where you asking to be swam, but you want to stick with your alliance member. Um, let's see who else we can uh, use. Okay, here now we have Attila. Let's say you use like a single DPS march, like Attila, Takeda, or Genghis Khan, uh, Saladin. Um, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't go here. I would, I wouldn't go into the middle here just to target like a march that I want to kill, uh, because I am. If I get in here, I am asking to be uh, hitting by a lot of AOE damages. So I would position myself either here fighting off Zid March it right here, a single march, and avoiding myself from getting a lot of AoE damages. Or fighting over here. Or fighting here. Fighting here, killing off Zid March, the CPO march it right here. Or fighting a little bit here. Right? I don't want to put myself near a lot of enemies with AoE skill damages. Um could be a little bit here, could be a little bit down here as well. But you have to be extremely, extremely careful. You gotta constantly watching for if there are enemy coming toward you. If they are, then you gotta move. You gotta move out. You have to move out. Maybe come here and attack this youngest can over here. So you don't want to position yourself in here unless you are tank with AOE damages. Uh, this is a big no. You wanna be on the side here, here. Or uh, here would be a perfect position for a single march, uh, uh, for a single target march, like Attila, Takeda, Genghis Khan, Saladin, someone who doesn't have AOE skill damages. Uh, let's go to a, a different scenario. Let's go to another scenario here. Okay, so this is scenario number two. So scenario number two, let's say if I am using a Joan de Barc, where should I put my Joan de Barc here? Um, so there are, there are a lot of enemies, so right here, I would put Joan de Barc right here, attacking these marches right here. I can provide the buff for my everybody within that circle 
And I am putting myself, I am keeping myself safe from being targeted from the enemy. So I will put myself either here or here in this uh, march, right here. So there is a tank protecting me from being attacked. And I can get the target on this march on one-on-one. -on -one, and I can able, I'll be able to casting a lot of skill to uh, the surrounding marches from my alliance. I definitely don't want to put myself here. I definitely don't want to put myself here or down here. Down here, down here is a little bit too risky because we do not have a lot of like blue marches here, and there are a lot of red marches from the enemy. So definitely a big no. Um, you don't want to put yourself here because you're too far away from your alliance member. Your role is a supporting role, but you want to be able to stick with your where the most of your alliance member are. And you want to provide the buff, but here you're only casting one buff for uh, one one guy, and you putting yourself at risk of being attacked by two marches as well. Uh, you want to be here if you play John the Bark, you play a supporting role, like John the Bark or Constantine. You want to put yourself here. And if you want to, if you play a YSG, if you have a, a march with YSG, it means you want to do a lot of AoE damages. So somewhere around here, attack attacking Zid March here will get you a lot of AOE skill damages. You can casting all the AOE skill damage around the area. You don't want to put yourself down here. It's too risky. It's too risky to bring a YSG down here. A lot of enemy down here. Uh, you want to be here. Here is a little bit too far. Like if you want to attack this guy, you want to be here. You want to be at least somewhere out here. Um, you can also attacking some right here as well. You can still deal a lot of AOE damage. You can see right here, like a lot of enemy are still inside that range of, of uh, YSG. So you need to understand the range of your commanders and position your commander accordingly. Uh, and let's say if you play someone like Sun Tzu, If you use someone like Sun Tzu with, with like a smaller AOE skill damage range, um, where should I put Sun Tzu? Definitely somewhere down here. Definitely somewhere down here, be high richer, so you can deal a lot of AOE damages. Definitely somewhere around here. Here only a single. Here you only get a single target. Here, here maybe. Here you get two two enemies. But if you go deep in here, you go a little bit deeper in here, and you stay beside Richard, you can hit like four or five marches at once using AOE skill damages. So that if I use Sun Tzu, and what if I use Attila or Attila Takeda or like any single marches? Um, Definitely stay, put myself here. Uh, stay away from the AOE damage area. I uh, don't want to be here. Don't want to attack any market in here. Don't want to attack any market in here either. Like there are way too many of them here. Definitely picking on this guy here or picking on this guy here or just be up here, be up here right here, like attacking on the market here, attacking on this market here, or maybe down here a little bit, a little bit on the side here, like attacking this march. Definitely don't want to be uh definitely don't want to be in the middle here. Uh don't want to be somewhere around here either, because there is no support here. And it's not good for single marches to be around somewhere around here. So definitely not here. So either here, 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 or somewhere here. Four pos four possible uh, positions you can position yourself to be at. Um, so is that another, another scenario? Let's go for one more scenario and we'll see. Let's go for one more scenario.
Okay, so we have another scenario here. Uh, in this scenario, where should we put? Let's say if we have if we if we use Jonavark. If we use Jonavark, I would put I would use John to attack this single market right here. Just stay here and and attacking on that single market there. I can provide for. I can provide the buff for so many of the alliance member in that within that circle area. Um, I could also put position myself somewhere around here as well. Uh, you can see right here, like the circle area can cover so many, so many many market from the alliance member. So definitely somewhere here. You definitely don't want to be here because here you're not buffing anybody. You're attacking on a single march, but you're not buffing on anyone. Uh, you too far from your alliance member. You want to be here. You want to be around the area where there are a lot of your alliance member. Is that how you want to be the best supporting uh, a commander? You're using the best supporting uh, commander and you provide the best support on the open field. So attacking Zid March right here, somewhere right here, could possibly attacking Zid March as well. Because a Joan of Arc buff is range range is very very huge uh so that if i use john the uh if i want to use ysg um if i'm if i am using ysg um definitely don't want to be hitting this guy um definitely don't want to be hitting on that guy because he's single single Marches here, and he's too far away from the other uh, enemy. I, I would I would position myself somewhere down here. I would position myself somewhere down here, where I can hit on at least like three or four marches from the enemy. And I am not like I am pretty uh, safe because I am still um, I am still in within. A lot of my alliance members are around, so a lot of alliance members are still around here. Um, good, great protection for YSG here. If if I get target, I can just move back a little bit. But if I stay here, I can do a lot of AOE damages. Uh, I don't want to put myself somewhere down here again. No, no protection down here. Uh, could easily the, the enemy could easily uh, turn around and attacking my marches, and I cannot run away. I cannot go go back. Here would be ideal. Ideal would be here. A lot of AOE damage for all the enemy nearby. So that if I use YFG. Um, Sanzu. So Sanzu, uh, the fanship area a little bit smaller. So you have to be a little bit more riskier. You have to come a little bit closer. So either here. Either here or a little down here. Uh, again, you don't want to be put yourself somewhere around here because you're slow for an infantry. Um, and if you're using like a single, if you're using like a single, um, uh, single target march like a tailor decatur. Uh, definitely swarming down on this guy here, like single, you can swarm him down easily on single target. Uh, swarm down this guy, uh, attacking this guy here as well. Uh, single, like single target, um, avoiding from getting uh, too close to the big uh, AOE area. Uh, possibly be around here because you has mobility, right? You're fast. So you can like stay on the side right here, attacking on Zid March, like keep tapping on it. And if you're getting target, you can just pull back to the left side and nobody will be able to catch you. Like, a lot of infantry marches around here. We barely see any cavalry marches. So it could be impossible for them to uh, to go after like, a march like Attila Takeda using cavalry. So here, you can attack here. And if the enemies, they're targeting you, you just pull back, you just pull over here a little bit over here. And once they stop attacking you again, come back here and start attacking them again. If they target you, pull, pull away. If they stop uh, targeting you, like come back here attacking again. Um, 
So that how you position yourself, how how position yourself is very important. It comes with experience. So the more you fight on the open fields, uh, the better. Like the more knowledge you you learn from all the commanders, and the more you will know where to position your your market effectively. So that the tip that the, the tip number three. And so if you following all of the tips, you will be able to find much, much longer on the open field. You will have a less severe wounded unit and get more kills. A KVK is a 40 days long event. You need to manage your resource and speed up so you can always fight when needed. Uh, if you fight at the ancient ruin, for example, it usually it usually a two hours long fight. Uh, you want to be able to fight for the whole two hours. Like don't play hero for 10, 20 minutes and fill up your hospital. I like I've seen low power T4 player just diving into the mass of enemy and got completely wrecked. Uh, you are not helping your alliance by dying or filling your your hospital fast. Uh, we need you to be on the field fighting for the entire two hours. Um, one way to rank a player from noob to pro level is that like if your hospital is filled within the first 10 minutes of ancient ruin, you're a fucking moron. Like if your hospital is filled within the first 20 minutes of ancient ruins, you're a newbie. Uh, if your hospital is filled within the first 60 minutes of ancient ruins, you're an okay player. And if your hospital is filled after two hours long of fighting at the ancient ruin, you're a very good player. And if your hospital is like somewhere like half filled after two hour long of fighting at ancient ruin, you're a bitch. You're like my level. So that's one way you can, um, you know, like rank players. So I hope this video helped you guys today. I get you guys some more tips, a little bit more tips on how to fight effectively on the open field. Uh, thanks for watching, guys.